Mark chapter 10, uh, 46 to 52. Mark chapter 10. We're going to talk about blind Bartimaeus to start with today. Mark chapter 10. <clears throat> and they came to Jericho. And as, they were, and as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out, cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, take heart, get up, he is calling you. And throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. So blind Bartimaeus, he was a beggar. He heard this commotion of people traveling by. Um, he found out that it was Jesus. And then he called out for help. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Remember, we've talked about this before, but whenever you hear someone call Jesus son of David, they recognize that Jesus is the Messiah. He's the one that God has sent to them. And as the Messiah, he would have the ability to heal. He would have the ability to do these amazing things to make the blind to see. And so the crowd was not sympathetic towards blind Bartimaeus. They're telling him to be quiet, to not bother Jesus. But Jesus called out, well, what do you want? As he was brought to him. And he says, I want to see. And that's when Jesus said, your faith has healed you. And the Bible says immediately he received his sight and he followed Jesus. Now that little phrase there amazes me as well because when he received his sight, what you know, what were the things that he might have wanted to do? Maybe he wanted to go back and find all his friends and let them know that he could see. Maybe he wanted to go out and look around and see the things that he had missed, at least for a period of time. We don't know how long um, he was blind. He had all these options of what he could have done with his new eyesight, with his new vision, but he chose to follow Jesus. And I think that's very important as we, as we look at this story and we look at what happened to him, that he, with his new vision, he was able to follow Jesus. And that's our theme for today, is this idea of a new vision. When we come to Christ, we experience a new vision because we were blind spiritually and now we can see. And so we have to ask, well, what should we do with this new vision that we have in Christ? As we've been looking at all these new things that we experience in Christ, what should we do? Well, following the example of Bartimaeus, we follow Christ. We have our new vision so that we can follow Christ. So maybe you've heard of this term before of spiritual blindness or spiritual sight. Um, we can see all around us, obviously, physically, but there's that spiritual realm. Paul talks about it a lot in Ephesians, by the way, um, that's not seen by the human eyes. And so we need spiritual sight and understanding and so, as we, uh, so that we can follow Christ and grow in Christ. And for that, we need that new vision. And again, it's a vision that he gives to us. So there's some thoughts I want to share uh, about this spiritual blindness and spiritual sight today um, as we uh, piggyback off of what happened to blind Bartimaeus in um, the book of Mark. So let me share a few thoughts with you um, this morning. First of all, before Christ, we have a limited vision of God. We need to understand that. So before a person becomes a Christian, and for you in your life, before you became a Christian, you had a limited vision and a limited understanding of God. Uh, remember, Satan blinds the minds of the unbelievers. We see that in Scripture. And so that would have been you outside of Christ, that he blinds the eyes of the unbelievers. So if you're out of Christ 
then you have a limited vision and an understanding of, of God. And so as a result, uh, we need help. We need someone to help us. It's going to be Christ. We need someone to help us so that we are able to see and understand and grow in our relationship with God and, and to follow God. We need that new vision so that we're not limited. You've probably heard the story of the, um, the blind men and the elephant. So somewhere in Asia on a country road, there's a, uh, some blind men standing there, and a man came by riding on an elephant. And so he recognized they were blind, and he was talking to them, and he had asked if they had ever felt or touched an elephant before, if they knew what an elephant looked like. And they said, no, we're blind. We have never been able to experience that. And he, so he invited, it, invited them to come up and, and to touch the elephant and so they could have an idea of what an elephant felt like and therefore what it looked like. And so they did and felt different parts of the elephant. And, and then he went on his way. And so when he went on his way, they went back and they were going to tell some of their friends about what an elephant looks like. And so one of the men said, oh, an elephant, it's, um, he's the one who touched the side of the elephant. He says, it's tall and wide and heavy, like a wall. An elephant is like a wall. And the next man says, it's not like a wall because he had touched the tusk. And he says, it's long and skinny and hard and has a point at it. And it's, it's more like a spear. An elephant's like a spear. And the other guy says, you guys are both wrong. An elephant's like a, like a, a large um, leaf because he touched the ear of the elephant. You could push on it and it moves around like a thick carpet, like a, like a big leaf. And, uh, and so they're arguing. And then the next one says, you guys don't have an idea of what an elephant's like. He's the one who touched the trunk. He says, an elephant, it's more like a, a big, thick snake. And then another one says, no, it's not a, like a snake. Uh, he's the one who touched the leg. And he says, an elephant's like a, a tree. And, and you can just feel how big and around it is going up to, to heaven. And the last one said, you're all wrong. He's the one who touched the tail. He says, an elephant's just like a rope is all it's like. And so they all had their own view of the elephant by what they touched. But obviously, they were limited in their understanding of an elephant because of their blindness. And we are, in our lives before Christ, we're limited of our understanding about God. But we're, the good news of that is that God is the one who reaches out to us and puts people in our path and puts opportunities in our path so that we can move away from that blindness, to get away from the blindness that Satan has put in our lives so that we can start understanding a little bit more about God. And it might be through some testimony and the word of God or a sermon or a study or somebody we talk to. And, and through that, um, that understanding of God can grow so that we have this desire to know more about God and to follow him. And so we have to understand the spiritual battle that's going on in the spiritual condition that we are in before Christ. And that is that we have a limited understanding about God. And that's we see in our lives where we can be the ones who help people have a better understanding about God so that they can then understand the, the promises of God and the gift of God and experience that life in Christ as well, because God is the one who can give us that new vision. In fact, that's the second thing that we need to look at today. The work of God gives us a new vision. Because of Christ, Bartimaeus could see. Because of Christ, we can see spiritually. Now, understand this. You can't just make yourself see spiritually. You can't make yourself have this new vision. It is a work of God in our lives at our conversion. When we become Christians, we are able, we have this new vision. So we're able to start understanding these things of God and we can, and we can see and obviously grow and, and continue to grow and learn more about God. You know, we've heard, um, the story of Elisha, many things that Elisha is involved in. And, you know, one of my favorite stories is the Elisha and, uh, and his servant. 
And so the king of Syria was all upset at Elisha, um, sent this huge army to get Elisha. The servant comes out of the house first, and he looks up, and he sees all around them. They're surrounded by this huge army from Syria. And he's freaked by this, and he goes back in, and he gets Elisha, and he brings him out. And then um, Elisha looks out, and he sees what this man sees, and, uh, and he says, you don't have to be afraid. Because those who are with us are greater than those who are with them. And that's probably when he thought maybe this is that new math that he didn't quite understand because it looked like just two of them and this huge army. So how can it be? How can we be more than them? And that's when Elisha prayed that God would open his eyes. And he opened his eyes and he saw all of God's warriors and angels all around this, um, this army that was bigger and obviously stronger than that army. And so there was a spiritual thing going on that Elisha could see and that this man could not see. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to see angels and you're going to see all of those chariots of fire and things like that. But we understand there's a lot going on in the spiritual realm that the Bible teaches us that we're going to have spiritual vision to be able to understand and that we have that ability. As, excuse me. <coughs> we have that ability as we grow closer to God and understand more about God and God's plan and what God is doing and that battle that's going on in the spiritual realm. We have the ability to spiritually see that and start understanding that. And that's how we're able to grow in our relationship with Christ. Um, and so that the work of God, he's, he's the one who gives us that vision. We don't come up with it, but God gives that to us. Something else about our new vision our new vision gives us confidence. As we grow in Christ and have this understanding, we can confidently follow Christ um, because we understand where we're going in all of this. Uh, I mean, it's interesting, you know, our, our weather we've had here recently um, with cold weather and, and a lot of rain and stuff or drizzle. Uh, but remember some of those mornings that were so foggy? Uh, and we don't get a lot of that, but they're just so foggy. And, you know, you're, uh, I had to go down the road. It was early in the morning. It was still dark. It was real foggy. You know, you don't have a lot of confidence in that situation. You just can't see very far um, in front of you in that because your vision is impaired. But when we have vision, we have a good, we, when we can see, we have confidence. When we, um, um, when we can see spiritually, we have confidence. You know, it reminds me of a, a time I was in, um, we were in Virginia at the time, and I was riding with some friends from church. It was a lady, she was driving, her mom was in the front seat, I was in the back seat, and we we're coming back from an event. And I noticed as we were coming to like an exit, um, the, the mother-in-law would say, oh, this is exit so-and-so. Okay, and then she took the exit. And they're going along, and she says, oh, yeah, okay, you're going to be turning left here. Here's the, and she's from that area, so, you know, she knew her way around. And here's, here's this street, and so she turned. And I noticed she just kept giving her a lot of instruction along the way. And it was, it was nighttime when we were coming home, so it was dark. And, and um, so, you know, we got home, I got out, and, and I think the next time I saw her, I said, I just have to ask you, does it bother you that your mother-in-law is, like, just telling you, what exit to take and what turn to take and all that stuff. And she says, oh, no, it doesn't bother me. I'm, I can hardly see. And so <laughs> I'm going, well, I lost all my confidence because um, I could see back there and uh, of riding with her. And so it's like, uh, uh, yeah. I, so she got the contacts and glasses, and it was a whole lot better after that. But, you know, with, uh, in life, we have a whole lot more confidence when we can see and spiritually, we have more confidence when we can see spiritually. We know what God is doing and what God's plan is and how we're part of that. I want to look at another blind man. Um, this is out of John chapter 9, the man born blind. Just a couple of verses. Having said these things, he spit on the ground and made mud with the saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. When you know this story, you understand that for this man, when he received his sight, uh, it brought about conflict. There were problems in his life because he could see. He was asked, 
How were your eyes open? His response was, this man Jesus. He took the mud, did the washing, did all that. Uh, The problem was it was the Sabbath day. And since it was the Sabbath day, the Pharisees were very upset that Jesus healed on on the Sabbath. So they were making accusations against Jesus. And they continued to question this man. Who is he? And his first response was that Jesus was a prophet. And there was more discussion and more accusations were brought. And then the man who was born blind said that Jesus must be from God because God used him to heal himself, this man that was born blind. And then after all that, he finally is able to see Jesus again, to meet him and talk to him. And when he does, there's a, some um, discussion with Jesus and he starts to understand because Jesus reveals himself to him. And so he understands then that Jesus was the Messiah. And the Bible says, and he worshiped him. And so we can see his response. So we see Bartimaeus, his response of confidence that he was confidently able to follow Jesus. We see with this man born blind that he had confidence to speak to those guys who were berating him for being healed uh, on the Sabbath and by this man that couldn't be from God because he healed on the Sabbath. But he knew better. He had confidence to speak the truth of what he knew that Jesus did for him and what he believed about God. We have a new vision in Christ. When you come to Christ, you now can see this spiritual realm, at least see the understanding of it. And as you grow in your knowledge and understanding of what God is doing and what it means to follow God and that understanding of who God is, is is better and better, then we can live and follow God in confidence to know that he has a plan and we can live according to that plan and we can follow him and we can walk with him in fellowship. And so our as we study the scripture and as we read the word of God and as we have fellowship and growing together, we can grow in our confidence because of this new vision that we have in Christ. And one more thought, our new vision helps us see the work of God in our lives. That new vision helps us see that God is changing us, working in us. And again, you see with blind Bartimaeus physically, you see with the man born blind physically, they could look now and see they've been healed and they could see things that they couldn't see before. And the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ is that he gives me that spiritual sight so that I can see God's work in my life. We can start and see that and start understanding this realm, the spiritual realm and this the truth of God and to not have to live in confusion uh, by what the world is trying to teach us. Again, every day we should remember and respond to, to God's work in our lives with that new vision and being in Christ. I can see who I was. I was a sinner. I was self-centered. I was lost in darkness without hope. That's where I was. I can look back and see where I was and who I was and how we are outside of Christ. But now in Christ, I see myself as God sees me, safe from that darkness, safe from sin and death and the power of the devil. I can see that. I can see what God has done for me and the power that he gives me. I can see myself as a child of God, gifted and valued and special because that's where we are in Christ because God sees each one of us that way as we live in Christ. In Christ, I see myself as that person with destiny, with purpose, that God has a plan for me, that he's going to use me um, in this life for his glory, redeemed to be responsible, blessed to be a blessing, saved to serve, to be involved in his ministry and his kingdom. I can see that spiritually now that God has a plan that he can use me. And that's the same for each one of us. And in Christ, I can see those around me, the lonely, the despairing, the grieving, the lost, the people who are hurting, Um, God's touched our eyes so that we can see people around and we can see their need and understand and have that that compassion um, in our hearts because we can see that need. Maybe we've missed it um, before. 
through the eyes of Christ, who's my Savior and my Lord, I can see myself. I can see others differently than I did before. I can see them the way that God wants me to see people. I can see that um, with, with, um, with one another that we have, that we can walk in fellowship and encourage one another and build up one another. I can see that those outside of Christ, I have that opportunity to be the light and a witness sharing um, the love of Christ so that we can um, grow in our relationship with each other and grow in our relationship with God. And others can put their faith in Christ as well. But we also have to say with this, there's a disobedience to God that blinds us. When we're disobedient to God, we're blinding ourselves in this life. And blindness comes when we embrace the teaching of this world and live by the flesh instead of walking in the spirit. And so if you're struggling in your faith, that's where we need to look and say, am I, am I doing things that, that I'm blinding myself to this sight that God wants me to have? Just like blind Bartimaeus who followed Jesus, that man who was born blind, they realized, and he realized who Jesus was and worshipped him, we must follow and worship and obey Christ in our lives. We must do that so that we can continue to see spiritually. And being religious, doing religious things doesn't protect us from all of that because we can look in scripture and we can see the Pharisees at this very same time who were very religious in their lives, but their hearts were far from God. And therefore they were blind uh, to the truth of God. And um, in fact, uh, Jesus spoke about that, uh, that um, he called them in several places, he called them blind guides. They were guiding the people, but they were blind. And so they're leading them astray in their lives, but they were the most religious of all people around them. And so we need to make sure that uh, we're not just trying to do things or outwardly um, show that we follow Christ, but from our heart, we are following Christ, obeying him, worshiping him and giving him honor. How do you respond to Jesus each day? Like the Pharisees who rejected Jesus saying, surely we're not blind, are we? Or like that man born blind who said, one thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. At the end of this story in John chapter 9, Jesus says something that's challenging to us and, and makes us look and evaluate our lives. He states that I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see may see. And those who do see may become blind. Because he talked about this earlier, that seeing they don't see, and hearing they don't hear, and they don't understand, quoting from Isaiah. And in our lives, we need to make sure we don't follow, follow into that trap of where we say that we follow Christ, but our life doesn't follow that. We say that we've put our faith in Christ, but we're not showing that with our, our obedience to Christ. So we need to see Christ and follow him and obey him. Charles Scott wrote a familiar hymn, Open my eyes that I may see, glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hands the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me, spirit divine. Let's pray. Lord, I do pray for this spiritual vision that um, we've been talking about today. I pray, Father, for each heart here. Uh, for those in Christ, I pray that we would um, increase and grow in our vision of following you and, and continue to be stronger in our relationship with you, walking in the Spirit. If there's someone outside of Christ today, I just pray for that, even with that limited understanding of you, that that understanding can grow and that as you draw them to you, that, uh, that they would make that decision. Help us, Father, to be able to encourage and strengthen and help people to make that decision for you. Um, Lord, I just pray that we would do your will and to see your face and glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen.
as we have our invitation song this morning, this is that opportunity to make sure uh, we are following Christ and we see his will in our lives and we, and we do that. Um, this is also a time that you can come and ask for prayer and we'll be glad to pray with you. So let's go ahead and stand together as we sing.